Welcome. This is the uh, Algebra 1 in the course practice test number 2, question number 26. The question says, which ordered pair represents the solution for this system of equations? Uh, for this system of equations, 3.5x plus 0.5y equals 7, and x minus y equals 10. Now, there's a few ways that we can go about doing this. Uh, one of the quickest ways to do it is through uh, graphing. So, we're going to graph it. In order to graph it in the calculator, which is what I'm going to do, I need to convert these into slope-intercept form, which means get y by itself. Draw your line. Get rid of your x since it's an abstract relationship. I need to subtract x. These cancel. Negative x and 10 cannot combine, so I'm just going to bring them down. Then I need to get y by itself again, which means divide by negative 1. So y equals x minus 10. That's the first one. For the next one, Draw my line, subtract 3.5x. One of the biggest things I see people do is combine the negative 3.5x and the 7. That can't happen. It's like apples and oranges. You can add as many oranges to a bag of apples as you want, but it's not going to make any more apples. It's just going to give you a bag of oranges and apples mixed together. Divide by 0.5. So I do negative 3.5 divided by 0.5 and it gives me negative 7x 7 divided by 0.5 gives me 14 now that I have my two set up so I'm gonna graph them really quickly hopefully I might need to change my window because it's got the plus 14 there so I'm gonna go ahead and change my y max and y min And I'm going to change my x max and x min as well. Why not? Why didn't I do it before? It's a better question. So I need to go in, clear out the old stuff. So I do x minus 10 for my first uh, equation, and then negative 7x plus 14 for my second one. I'm going to graph them really quickly. Oops. Apparently my I forgot to add zeros to the back of my window, so let's see if I can get in and change those from 2 to 20. Sorry about that. They graph look wonky immediately. So it should still be in there so I can graph them. There's the first one. There's the second one. So what I'm going to do is look for my intersection point. So I'm going to hit second and calc, which is, has a trace. The T84 will actually calculate the intersection point for me. So I'm just going to go up and find the basic location where they're crossing. Hit enter a few times. And it tells me that they cross at x equals 3 and y equals negative 7, which means the answer would be right here. So it says x is 3, y equals negative 7. If I don't have that information or your calculator doesn't do an automatic um, intersection, what happens if you have that? That does happen. You can go into the table and find the answer. I know that they cross somewhere in the positive x's. This x represents all the x's that both graphs share. This represents the corresponding y values for the first graph and the second graph. As you can see right here, they're both negative 7, which means these are at the same exact point, so you say 3, negative 7. That's how you calculate these through uh, graphing. Now let's look at uh, elimination. In elimination, I'm going to try to find something that allows me to get rid of one of the variables and then plug it back in. So what I'm going to do is get rid of the x here by multiplying this whole section by 3.5. So 3.5 times x gives me 3.5x. Uh, 3.5 times negative y will be negative 3.5y. And then 10 times 3.5 should be 35. And it is. So these cancel, and then I'll do 0.5 minus negative 3.5 and get 4. And then I'll do 7 minus 35 and get negative 28. This will be y, by the way. I'm going to solve this one. y is equal to negative 7. I just did that by canceling out, and I used subtraction. Uh, now that I have that information, I can plug back into this equation the value of y that I just determined. Uh, so this is x plus 7 equals 10. Subtract 7 from both sides and I get x is equal to 3. 
So x is 3, y is 7, still gives me the same answer. That's another way to do it, that's elimination. Let's talk about a third way to do it, which is substitution. If I can convert my one of my forms into like figure out what x or y is, so in this case, let's just do x. So I'm going to add y to both sides. So I can say that another way to write x would be to just write y plus 10. So going back into my original equation, I'm going to substitute this new value for x where the old x used to be. And then I'm just going to solve. So I'll do 3.5 times y is 3.5y. 3.5 times 10 gives you 35 plus 0.5y equals 7. I'm going to combine some like terms here. This is looking suspiciously like the one I just did, which is a good thing. You'd want it to. So really, I can use the information negative 7. And as we did before, I just plug this back in here, and I'll end up with x is equal to 3. So 3 and negative 7 again. All I did for substitution is I just rewrote one of the problems in a way they got a variable by itself, and then took that new identity of the variable and plugged it into the one that I didn't fiddle with. So I fiddled with x minus y equals 10. So I figured out what x could be or another way to reimagine x. Use the reimagined version uh, for x, like rewriting the x in terms of y. Plugged it in, got that answer. Now there's even another way that you can do this. If none of those methods work, like what happens if you get to test A and you lose your mind? Well, it's a multiple choice test for now, uh, but this is x and this is y. If I can find situations where I'm making a truth statement, because this is equal, right? So if I can find true statements and one that works for both, uh, that's my answer. So I know that C is the correct answer. So what I'm going to do is C, uh -huh, if I plug in the x value for it and the y value, just make sure you plug them in the right place, much like we've done in other problems, except in many cases, like when we find restriction of x, you have to plug the x in both times. But in this case, 1 is the x and 1 is the y. I'm going to see if this gives me a true statement. So I'll do 3.5 times 3 plus 0.5 times negative 7. And it gives me, if I put all this together, it gives me 7. Well, 7 does equal 7, so that's truth. Uh, for the other one, for x minus y equals 10, I need to plug in for the x, 3, and minus y would be negative 7 equals 10. Well, 3 minus negative 7 is the same as 3 plus 7, which is 10. So that's a true statement. So I know that c is the correct answer because it made it true for both. Let's show you what, I'll show you what happens. Let's, like it's, there's more than one person here. It's me. Um, I'm going to show you what happens if you plug in d to show you that it will sh prove it to be incorrect, or it won't give you the truth that you're looking for. Uh, so say I plug in. Um, into this one, 3 minus 7. That would be the x given to me in d and the y given to me in d. Well, 3 minus 7 is negative 4, and that's not the same as 10. So if it makes a lie or not a true statement like it's supposed to, then you can say that d is probably not the right answer. If you did um, a, it would give you negative 7 minus 3, which gives you negative 10, so that's not right. And then 7 minus 3 is 4, so b doesn't work either. Um, it's just another way to go about doing it if you don't want to do one of the other methods or you just forget how to do them. So That's four different methods to get this problem right. I hope w at least one of them is something that you feel comfortable doing.